a Dear Media original podcast. Today's episode is brought to us by Seed. Gut health, probiotics, and microbiome are buzzing in conversation, headlines and hashtags, and discoveries in the microbiome research are transforming medicine, hygiene, diet, and the choices that we make every day for our health. So with this new frontier, however, comes an absolute overload of information and misinformation, and that can feel really confusing and overwhelming. And that's really where seed comes in. And the DS01 Daily Symbiotic is so high quality and so well-researched. It's something that I really trust. They develop scientifically validated, clinically studied next-generation probiotics for people and the planet. And the thing about it is if you've ever taken probiotics before and you haven't really felt a difference, it's likely that the capsule wasn't even designed to survive your stomach acid and the bile salts and the digestive enzymes. Seed is completely different now more than ever. It is so important to trust science and integrity when it comes to learning about and maintaining a healthy microbiome. Seed is the company that I really trust. Seed's DS01 Daily Symbiotic is a plant-based prebiotic and probiotic with 24 strains that have been clinically or scientifically studied for its benefits. I remember I started taking seed when I was pregnant with Oliver. And at the time, after I was done with my first pack, I ran out and went to a different one. And I really felt the difference. And I've been on it ever since. I'm a really big believer. It makes me feel incredibly regular and balanced. And I do feel like I'm keeping the diversity of my microbiome incredibly healthy. I know this was a ton of information, but I think it's important because seed really is the real deal when it comes to a probiotic, one that's backed by clinical trials and scientific data. Visit seed.com slash instincts and use the code instincts to redeem 30% off your first month of seeds DS01 daily symbiotic. That's seed.com slash instincts and use the code instincts. Hi, welcome to Good Instincts. I'm Shira Barlow, but you may know me as the food therapist. Join me every Monday through Friday for bite-sized episodes designed to help you close the gap between where you are right now and where you want to go. This should feel good, like really good. And it will, I promise. Okay, today we have Barry Stein here, who is so special to me. She's an art educator, and I really wanted more people to know about you and hear from you. And so I'm really excited to have you here. Thank you. So we've been talking recently about this idea of disconnection syndrome, which is basically where there's the part of the brain, which is the prefrontal cortex. And that's like the really sensible part of the brain that helps us make decisions that are good, not just for right now, but for long term. And then there's the amygdala, which is the part of the brain that kind of just like is afraid of things and is like, is this okay? Am I safe? And when the brain is functioning together in that way, when they're communicating, we're able to make decisions that really benefit ourselves in the future. Mm -hmm. But when we're like stressed and tired and busy and just kind of in that flow, it's really hard for them to connect. And then we start making decisions that are just present focused. And we start, you know, like eating things that we might not like actually really want and being super spendy and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And so we've been talking so much about like the ways that you can combat that and the stuff that I do. But one of the things that keeps coming up, and I really, really wanted to talk to you about it, was this idea of having a creativity practice. And I wanted to hear from you of, how you think creativity helps with people's like nervous systems and just their mood altogether. Thank you. Well, first, thank you so much for having me. Yeah. And I think that, I mean, I think that we share an affinity for education. Yeah. And in so many ways, I feel connected in this way that you are such a diligent researcher in yeah. what you do. And I think that thank you take you. that responsibility really seriously. And so I I feel this connection to you in terms of being like a little neuroscience nerd. Yeah. I My background is in art education and museum education. I taught in art museums in New York and in schools. And so I have that background. But about five or six years ago, I started to do this research into, you know, studying how neuroscience and creativity connect. And there are all of these emergent studies that are coming out showing the incredibly powerful 
mental and physical health benefits to having a regular creative practice, and which is incredibly exciting for people in the field like me who are trying to spread this message. And I think that it's in so many ways, you know, talking about this idea of disconnection that we have. Yeah. I immediately thought of, you know, something personally that I fall victim to is like scrolling, being fully addicted to my phone and kind of just getting in that cycle. And it's hard to break away from that. And I always find that when I personally take time, I try to have my own creative practice every day. I mean, there's a lot of science that shows that just 10 to 20 minutes of doodling a day can lower your cortisol. You know, it lowers blood pressure. It, you know, increases your brain plasticity. I mean, there's there's just so much, so many health benefits, both physical and mental. And I always like to say that it does, you're doing something with your hands besides texting, typing, and driving. Completely. And, you know, you're disconnecting in a way that's healthy and positive. You're taking a break and you're building a relationship with like, with, your inner spirit in a way when you're expressing yourself. Completely. I really, really, really relate to that. And we talked about this offline because we were at an event recently at this Goop Mother's Day event. And it was like really for the kids. The art was for the kids. But then we were making kind of these Mother's Day cards together. And it was one of those mornings where like we had a lot, me and Oliver had a lot of things to do. Like we were going to go to that event and then we were going to go to rock climb for him. And we had a couple things we we're going to do. And I felt myself really like downregulate. I felt my nervous downregulate in this yeah. way that was really relaxing. And I, I know a lot of people, myself included, have like this underlying perfectionism thing that we're all trying to shake. You know, there's that old kind of like, I mean, I went to like a crunchy school in San Francisco and it was all like, there's no mistakes in art. Right. But I do think that there is this element of creating for the purpose of creating, not like for an actual thing that you're going to have in your house. I mean, you right. certainly could. Will you talk a little bit about that, about like in terms of you're saying 10 to 20 minutes a day, what could that look like? Because I think the reality is, is so many people have like their other practices kind of down, like we mm -hmm. know how to exercise size. Right. But what would it mean for someone to have a practice of like 10 to 20 minutes? Sure. Absolutely. I know this is something I always like either like to start my day mm. and end it if possible. I love with that. Having some kind of practice. I keep all of my materials in a little pouch in the kitchen and I kind of, I kind of have them around the house and all in a little zippered pouch so you can just take it I out and have that. it, you know, whenever you you know, are ready to do something. Collaging, for example, is something that a lot of people, I love collage because I think that there's, there's so many ways to approach it. And I think that it's a really kind of democratic art form. And it's, you know, and if you have paper and you don't even need scissors, you can tear paper and, and create, you know, create shapes and different kinds of lines. I love the activity of drawing with scissors. I, mm. I learned about this when I, back when I was an art educator to young ones and thinking about exploring the elements of art, like line, shape, color, form. It seems like such a sort of elemental, kind of elementary approach, but it's actually incredibly powerful. And many, you know, artists, important artists in the 20th century spent their whole careers, you know, just exploring line, exploring color, exploring shape. And so I think that going back to this, like the very, the very sort of basic understanding of like the elements of art and thinking about drawing with scissors, creating as many different kinds of lines as you can. And mm. it actually becomes a lot more fun and engaging once you kind of get in the flow. And the collage kit that I have, it comes with a journal. And I love this idea of, you know, instead of, I mean, you can incorporate writing into it. It's an online journal. And I love the idea of creating and expressing yourself visually, but then also through writing. But creating a, you know, having a visual journal entry every day. I was, you know, talking to our mutual friend, Betsy, about this, about how she doesn't necessarily consider herself creative, but mm. she's incredibly creative. Yes. But she loves this idea of creating a vision board, like a daily vision board. I almost. love that. I know, like thinking about what you want to bring into your day or reflecting on the day at the end of the day and sort of thinking about these bigger ideas or concepts and how you can you know, portray them or create them visually. It's really interesting. I love it so much because it's so analog. Totally. It, and the thing about it is, you know, we all have these things in our wellness toolkits. And I think all of us are trying to add to them in a way that is actually sustainable, that they actually could do. And I think right now, 
we all know that we're supposed to be more mindful. We want to be more mindful in everything. And certainly in this practice, like being more mindful with food, but like, how do you actually do that? I think the key to it is paying attention to one thing while you're doing it. Having this one sole focus and having busy hands in this really creative way is really special. Mm -hmm. My client and I had talked about having a creative practice at the end of the day Mm -hmm. and what that would mean. And again, it doesn't have to be, you know, like, painting or watercolor. Right. Right. I think people really think that it has to be like messy and a whole thing, but I love the idea of collage. And for anyone, sorry, I leaned over, but no. for anyone, there are these really beautiful packs that she has, Art Life Practice. I'll link it in the episode description with all the beautiful materials because I think that that can be a barrier to entry of mm-hmm. just like, what even is like the scissors and the cards and whatever. Right. I also think like making something for someone else, like a card. I'm such a big proponent. I mean, so the the newest collage kit comes so with the journal, but then it comes with six folded cardstock cards uh, and envelopes. I because I, I think that there's no, you know, more meaningful expression of love than by when you make a card for a friend or a loved one, or family member, whether that's like for a birthday or the holidays or just because you love them. And it's so, everyone wins. Like you get the benefit of being able to, you know, express yourself. And then, you know, it's really meaningful. Getting a homemade card in that way is really, really special. I know. And I think this is really special. And again, I th- do think it's incredibly analog. And because of that, I don't think people are really discussing it in this way. Mm-hmm. But it is, like we said, coming up in my research as something, you know, like we all know these other things. And I feel like time is, in nature and creativity is really coming up. The other thing that we talked about recently on the show was this idea of kind of like reconnecting to this like childhood summertime joy. Totally. Because we get away from that as adults. But to me, it was really like, there's something about, I always had like a lanyard or a friendship bracelet. Like, yeah. I had it like in a safety pin to my knee and like feeling like sun on your shoulders and, and doing that. It. Yeah. Totally. It's a very visceral feeling. It is. And yeah. I do think, I mean, all the research is there that it it actually is really helpful for your nervous system. Mm-hmm. It does help downregulate. I do think that it'd be an amazing thing to do right before bed or first thing in the morning or take, and again, I think in the same way, because we've talked about this with exercise where I think people feel like they have to put in 45 minutes to an hour, but that you're, yeah, you're telling us that it can be 10 minutes and it can really be rewarding in that moment. And like, take that time during the day. Absolutely. I mean, so many things are coming up right now. I think that, you know, personally, when I think about when I found a movement practice that really resonated with me, that was so incredibly powerful. And I think that we know now that there are so like, Everything is customizable now, right? I mean, you can, with diet and movement, supplements, meditation, everyone, you have to find something that resonates with you and that's something that you can, that you feel good about cultivating practice and that you feel excited about doing. Because you don't want to dread, you know, your exercise, whatever it is. You want to find, you know, pleasure in it. We, You know, we're living in one life, you know, you should enjoy that. And so I think that with art making, there's so many ways so many ways to enter in. And I think that it's just a matter of understanding that you don't have to be good, good, I'm doing air quotes, <laughs> to receive the benefits. I mean, there's all of, there's so much data that shows that, that you, you know, it doesn't matter if you have like the technical skills. I'm not a trained artist. I'm a trained art educator, but I don't consider, you know, I, my doodles are silly. You know, they're like the yeah. same thing that my four-year-old niece does. So there's that aspect the other thing was there's this resource that I've been sort of like preaching to the yeah. gospel of. And I have never met these women. And I, this isn't like a plug, but yeah, there's yeah. this this Your Brain on Ooh. Art. I was telling you about this Yes, book. yes, yes, you did. So Susan Meg Salmon, I've been studying her work at the International Arts and Mind Lab at Johns Hopkins. And Ivy Ross is the other author. She is a designer at Google. Their book is absolutely, I mean, like every page is underlined and mm. and there's an exclamation point, but they say that in the same way that you might exercise to lower cholesterol and increase serotonin in the brain, just 20 minutes of doodling or humming can provide immediate support for your physical and mental state. Mm. In fact, so many studies have shown the swift physiological benefits to our health from the arts and aesthetics. We debated calling this book 20 Minutes on Art. I love that. I think that that's so powerful. And I think that we're all looking for something. And I think that oftentimes it's kind of the like 
most basic back to fundamentals thing, don't totally. you think? Like walking and art and, and getting play. outside. Yes. They talk about how art and play are two sides of the same coin mm. and how play and, you know, my background is, is an education, is a progressive educator. And so I understand and that the idea of play and learning resonates so deeply with me. It's unfortunate as a society, we we leave creative practice to a select few and we leave play to children. Mm. And that's doing such a disservice to us. I yeah. mean, I'm loving these. I feel like there's this resurgence of like adult summer camp yes. and there's, there's so many ways. And it, that makes me so happy to see that people are engaging with their inner, inner child and Completely. inner artist. And I talk about it the art life practice workshops that the physical component of using your hands, but Mm. then it's you're activating that sense of wonder and discovery and awe that you had as a child, you know, when you were making just for fun and you weren't worried about what the outcome was going to be. Completely. And for anyone, I, I so recommend, she's so, so special. And she, you do have these workshops in LA, Art Life Practice. And I have done one and it was really that. And it was really fun because it was like really social yes, and also too. really, there were all these like fun materials. And like I said, the little pouches that she does sell that are on Art Life Practice are like already done for you. Because that to me would feel a little daunting of like, how am I going to put together these materials to have, like if I'm going to do this 10 minutes a day, right. how, like where do I start? Right, right. And I think so many of us, that that is that barrier. And I think you're so special. And I think that Thank this you. is really important. And I'm so curious if anyone has their own creative practice, I would love to know. Come find us and Tell us. Barry, will you tell us where you can find you online? Thank you. Yes. Artlifepractice.com is our website. And then we're on Instagram at artlifepractice. The kits are sold at the Hammer Museum and at the Whitney Museum. And they're soon going to be launching at the Metropolitan That's Museum. That's so which is amazing. Really no way. Oh, yeah. I love that. I love when like special <laughs> oh, people win. Thank That's you. Really thank you. That's really me Thank you. That's really it is, prestigious. Thank you. It's. I'm so, so excited. So that'll be in mid-July. That's amazing. Yes, thank you. Also, guys, this was Barry's first podcast. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for being thank here. Thank you. Thank you, Shira. Thank you so much for listening to Good Instincts, hosted and written by me, Shira Barlow. You can find me on Instagram at Shira underscore RD. Good Instincts is a Dear Media Daily. Today's episode is brought to us by Seed. Gut health, probiotics, and microbiome are buzzing in conversation, headlines and hashtags, and discoveries in the microbiome research are transforming medicine, hygiene, diet, and the choices that we make every day for our health. So with this new frontier, however, comes an absolute overload of information and misinformation, and that can feel really confusing and overwhelming. And that's really where seed comes in. And the DS01 Daily Symbiotic is so high quality and so well-researched. It's something that I really trust. They develop scientifically validated, clinically studied next generation probiotics for people and the planet. And the thing about it is if you've ever taken probiotics before and you haven't really felt a difference, it's likely that the capsule wasn't even designed to survive your stomach acid and the bile salts and the digestive enzymes. Seed is completely different now more than ever. It is so important to trust science and integrity when it comes to learning about and maintaining a healthy microbiome. Seed is the company that I really trust. Seed's DS01 Daily Symbiotic is a plant-based prebiotic and probiotic with 24 strains that have been clinically or scientifically studied for its benefits. I remember I started taking seed when I was pregnant with Oliver. And at the time, after I was done with my first pack, I ran out and went to a different one. And I really felt the difference. And I've been on it ever since. I'm a really big believer. It makes me feel incredibly regular and balanced. And I do feel like I'm keeping the diversity of my microbiome incredibly healthy. I know this was a ton of information, but I think it's important because seed really is the real deal when it comes to a probiotic, one that's backed by clinical trials and scientific data. Visit seed.com slash instincts and use the code instincts to redeem 30% off your first month of seeds DS01 daily symbiotic. That's seed.com slash instincts and use the code instincts.